I think there needs to be a candle scented old forest houses, old log cabins, because I love the smell of all these old log cabins. decided that we wanted to hit up some spots along the Blue Ridge Parkway that we just don't want to miss before we leave. First up, the North Carolina Arboretum. There are so many lessons to be learned from the forest. Not only conservation lessons to help keep our planet healthy, but also academic lessons for the kiddos and life lessons for us. North Carolina Arboretum. Thank you to Joshua Messer for suggesting this for us. We're finally checking it out. We've been meaning to check it out. It's right off the Blue Ridge Parkway and it is free to get in. However, it is $16 for parking. For one vehicle. For one vehicle. So keep that in mind when you come. We decided to skip school. We are doing a field trip day what? or forest school. Uh, we didn't get the books out at all today. We're just going to go ahead and see what we can find and see what we can explore and, and learn. We're, and we're going to take pictures of the insects so we can earn the badges. Yes, and we'll talk about the badges that we found here in North Carolina, which is a really cool project. It's a grant. I believe it originated here. So we're going to go learn more about it. Okay, this program is so stinking cool for homeschoolers. It is the Let's Explore Eco Explorer program. And here at the North Carolina Arboretum right now on display, they have all of these Lego sculptures everywhere. There are 10 of them right here in the gardens. It is also pet friendly, so we get to bring Cinder with us as long as she's kept on a leash. And the kids are going to take turns with my phone, snapping pictures of insects that they spy and colors found in nature. And we are working on two different badges. One is the entomology badge, which stands for what? What is entomology? Insects. The study of? Insects. The study of insects. Entomology badge, and we're getting the colors in nature badge, which is another one we're working on. And which is really cool because it kind of combines learning about different colors in nature and also oh, yeah. art. Luckily, there's a lot of different shelters around here throughout the garden. It started to rain, and so we had to go sit underneath a shelter, but it gave us a chance to get some of this done. They are writing a story about an insect for one of their challenges. Hey, are you finding cool stuff? Ooh, oh, that's an excellent picture. This is one of the exhibits that I'm looking forward to the most is the bonsai exhibit. Let's go check it out. And I am just thrilled at this stuff because, you know, I'm totally a tree hugger hippie when it comes to plants and things like that. And I love this art. Um, behind me is a section of uh, bonsais and just some quick back stuff here. Most people think that when they, you know, they hear the term bonsai tree, they're thinking that it's a, a type of tree, like it's the name of the plant. And that's not the case. Bonsai is actually an art that was developed like way, way, way long time ago in Japan and eventually introduced to the world during a, uh, like a fair in Paris, I think in the 1900s. But these trees are amazing. They're real. They are not fake. Um, it takes years to get this to happen. And the goal is that it's never finished. They, um, the artist, if you will, or the, the gardener or cultivator, however you want to take the title, um, trims, not only prunes the trees, but also has to take the thing out of its container and prune the roots as well to keep it strong and healthy. And my most favorite over here is this amazing example of this Japanese maple. Here, I'll flip it around so you guys can really see it. It just looks like the quintessential bonsai tree. Um, not only, you know, is it a Japanese maple, obviously chosen for culture, 
but just the shape of it inside. And it looks, I mean, it is like a fully grown tree with root systems and the, and the pot and everything that they have chosen to put it in just really speaks to it. Just to get a little bit of reference for size for why that bonsai tree is so neat, this is a Japanese maple. So you can see how big they can get. garden is really inspiring just it's so cool to see the dedication that goes into these trees and just the whole philosophy behind it and the use of imagination like the dry creek was really cool because the creek is there they built the creek but there's no water in it like you have to imagine the water imagining where your life is going to be in the next five years or ten years or imagining the things that you um, dream about and imagining that they're real and that that path is in front of you. The power of imagination is incredible. Oh, you want water. You, so there's a dry creek there. You build it and you imagine this water and one day it's going to rain and that water comes. So what are you imagining? What are you hoping is going to happen in your future? What can you build to get you toward that direction so that one day when it finally rains, you're ready and that imagination comes to fruition. You know, to do the art of bonsai, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of perseverance, patience, and just vision. peace, maybe? Oh yes, and most certainly it takes vision. And we think it speaks to us because that's just like our dreams, that's just like all of our dreams. The other neat thing about bonsai is that it's never, ever finished the plant keeps growing. You have to keep tending to it. You have to keep it growing. And very similar to a dream or just a life in general, you have to keep growing. You have to keep moving forward. You have to keep working on it. What's sculpting you? Are you a bonsai that's perpetually growing? Who's your sculptor? What's sculpting your life right now? Sometimes you gotta lose limbs. <laughs> you gotta lose limbs. Those bonsai trees had to lose limbs, but they are beautiful. They were molded into a beautiful creation. is yours strike them with your glow go on now be good be fine live your life dream big don't forget to be kind live it's your life it's been super fun coming around here and finding the different Lego sculptures. And this one so far takes the cake in terms of both beauty and also the amount of Legos that went into it. What is it, Aaron? How many? 68? 68,827. That's some time and dedication, everybody. The Education Center is closed, which is a huge bummer. However, we're getting plenty of education as we walk around and learn about all these plants and wildlife taking pictures and listening but I do wish the education center was open maybe when COVID is all over live your life dream big don't forget to be kind live it's your life go on now change we did not want to miss was the Cradle of Forestry. It's about four miles off of the Blue Ridge Parkway and it was something that we definitely couldn't leave North Carolina without visiting as it's the birthplace of the National Forest Service.
right, everybody, we are here today, Mr. Ethan, at the Cradle of Forestry. Mainly, we're in Pisgah National Forest, which was the first national forest. And we are at the Biltmore Forest School. We're super excited to visit this. And it is part of the national park system, which we love. And of course, are super excited today because this guy is in fourth grade. And so he gets to turn in for a national parks pass, the Every Kid in a Park National Park Pass, which gets you in and the entire family for free to all the national parks in the United States. Uh, we've talked about this before and how much it's such a cool program. If you guys have a fourth grader, definitely look it up. It is super easy. Just yep. print this. You print this little thing with their registration and it's, it's available for kids in public school systems as well as homeschoolers and road schoolers, obviously. So we are gonna go get his pass and then check this place out. We are super excited. They had, uh, the U.S. Forest Service had rangers living there to the mid 60s. Yeah, five star accommodations, I guess, according <laughs> to the government. <laughs> We are standing at the area of the commissary and the first house where the forest school students used to live up until the 1960s while they were here learning how to manage forestry. Shanks Rangers are plain mountain folks whose furnishings were simple but practical. Now that's your bathroom. What? Right here. That pot? That pot. Literally, like, that was their stove. They didn't have an oven or anything. So everything was made in that and baked in all the cast iron skillets. And you know what I noticed? What do you Look notice? at the children's chores. The children's chores. What does it say? We put the floor, set the table, gather wood, dust, fold clothes, wash clothes, chop wood, fetch water, clean the barn, and gather eggs. That was every day, every single day. Pretty neat, yeah? You guys have it so easy. Yeah. <laughs> I was really excited to come and check this place out because I was thinking in my mind like forest school oh like forest school is a popular trending thing for kids right now where your kids learn stuff outside in nature and there's actual whole forestry schools now where kids go and they learn their actual like elementary education outside however that's not what this is this is a forest school in the sense of the original first like forest protection kind of school where they would take they would have kids come and they would teach them they were like older kids though I think we're not sure just we're not sure yet age group, yeah um, but they would learn how to manage the forest and how to um, log without harming the area because they realize that if you just come in and you log everything that you'll destroy that part of land you know that land will be destroyed forever so the forestry school was started to help keep, help teach people to maintain the forest. It's just a shell. So you could see where his legs came out of it. Eat. Oh, spiders. <laughs> oh, spiders are good. No, they're not. They well. bite people. <laughs> I love my tree huggers.
You can absolutely bring your pups if you want, or cat on a leash, bum, I suppose, bum, too. Bum. We didn't bring Cinder because we knew we'd be in and out of the visitor center, so she stayed at home today. The other thing that's really neat about this that I like is this is 100% accessible, including the cabins and things. They have built ramps so you could go up into them with wheelchairs or if you have trouble with stairs and stuff. I really think that's neat. This is another Eco Explore hotspot. So if you're part of that program, then you can take pictures here and you get an extra point for taking the pictures of your wildlife here at a North Carolina Eco Explore hotspot. Pretty cool. <laughs> As a junior forest ranger, I give my pledge as a junior forest ranger. Congratulations. Good job, guys. Yay. Let me see. Whoa, junior forester. That is cool. There's still a lot of places along the Blue Ridge Parkway that we haven't yet seen, but we're pretty glad that we got to spend a whole week studying the forests. Our family is forever grateful for the National Forest Service. Our hearts go out to the men and women, forest rangers, and firefighters who are fighting the wildfires in the West right now. We pray for people's safety, for the safety of their homes, and the preservation of our precious lands.